Hello, 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 and welcome to a video that's going to be a little bit different from our regular tutorial and workflow videos that we do on this channel. Um, but I just got really excited about Rhino 7 and what kind of new tools it's going to have. So I wanted to make this, this particular video here. Um, Rhino 7 is still in work in progress. Um, so, so the version is still work in progress, but I assume that no new tools or at least a minimum amount of new tools are going to be introduced. So everything that I'm going to show here are going to be some, um, are going to be things that you'll see in Rhino 7 once it's shipped. So let's take a quick look at uh, the, the interface. So as you can see, the interface hasn't changed much. Uh, everything is the same as in Rhino 6, but now in... Um, uh, now you have a tab here that says new in version 7, right? Where, which basically just uh, saves you the time to, to kind of go through uh, different tools and investigate what they do. Um, so let's go through them one by one and I'll, I'll skip a few. I'll, I'll just focus on the ones that I find most useful to my workflow. But uh, maybe you'll... Uh, figure out a way of how to use, for instance, a run script compiler. Okay, so I will skip sub D for now. We will come back to it by the end of the video, just because it's a, uh, it's a set of tools on its own. And I'll just go through um, these tools right here. So let's start with ribbon offset. Um, this tool that you can see right here. Um, Basically, for, for this to work, let me quickly create... Hmm, let's just do this curve here in the top view, and I'll just create this kind of a blobby, blobby curve, something like that. Yeah, that should do the trick. Let me just take these two points, move them down, take these two, move them up. So I'm just messing around with, with, with this curve. Okay, so we end up having this kind of a shape. And I could use a regular offset on this to, to, to make it wider, right? Uh, something like this, maybe let's do more, 10, something like this. But you can see when I try to do a regular offset, it starts quite messing up quite a bit, right? In, in, in this narrow part. Everything else seems to kind of be working as expected. So, and, and then I could create a loft between them and, you know, we end up having this kind of a form, which is not ideal. So let me undo and then select ribbon offset. So I will select the closed curve to offset. So I'll select this curve right here. So it does need to be closed and side to offset. So I'll specify the side. So outwards in my case. And now I have this menu here, which I can change, uh, in which I can change quite a few things. Yeah, when we're in shaded view, that's good. So offset distance, I believe we used 10, right? So I'll use 10 again. And this is what we get. And actually, let me say none for now. So you can see that here, it's still messing up a little bit, but it's far from, you know, from, from what we uh, what kind of problems we had before with the regular offset. And also that the nice thing about it is that it can create um, a surface, right? In, in, in between the original curve and the offsetted one here. Before we do that, let me experiment with the blend radius. So if I increase the blend radius, it uh, cleans up the offsetted curve even further. Right, so that's bl blend radius of 10, that's blend radius of 5. Hello, 5. Blend radius of 1. Yeah, so that's 1. That's 2. That's 5. And that's 10. Right, so I'll keep it as, as 10. Then we can rebuild and so on, but uh, you'll mm, mess around with it by yourselves. Um, so back to the surface creation. The nice thing about it is that we can create a surface and here we have two options, either sweep between two rails or use a mixed sweep network surface. And for, for this particular example, I'll, ju I'll just use sweep two, right, like so. And it creates a surface for us, right? So 
if I have a preview turned on, I can see the surface and it's not ideal, right? But there is this button that is called add slash. If I click that button, I can start messing around with these um, ISO curves here of the surface and kind of remake the direction of it, right? So for instance, here I can add a slash like so. And here I can add a slash like so. And you can already see that it's doing a much better job at, at creating a surface right here. And I could mess around here for quite quite a while and get a pretty, I believe, pretty, pretty clean result. So once I'm happy with it, I just hit enter, I hit OK. And that's my surface, right? Which is kind of nice, really nice to have. And let's go for Arctic view. There are some shading issues here, so I would probably need to revisit this part and, and clean it up even further with slashes, but that's that's what you have. So this is a very strong tool, um, and I'm really um, excited to see it being integrated into Rhino 7. So before we had quite a few problems with um, finding uh, curves that are self-intersecting in just in vanilla rhino without any use of grasshopper and now i'm happy to say that it's finally been fixed or implemented into rhino 7. so these are the two tools that are really useful sell self-intersecting curves and find curves self-intersections so to really quickly show you for instance here i have a whatever a curve doing its thing, another one doing its thing, and then we have a third one that is intersecting itself, right? So if I were to click on this cell self the select self-intersecting curves tool, it's going to just select the one that is self-intersecting, meaning that cleaning up your models and cleaning up uh, your, your, your drawings is going to be much, much nicer. Um, so that's selection, right? For intersect self, well, actually, we still need that curve there. Intersect self, if I click on this tool, it will ask me to select curves to self-intersect. I will select this curve right here, hit enter, and then it's going to give me the exact point where it's self-intersecting. Um, how do I show this in a, in a good way? So, for instance, if we have... Uh, it's going to automatically close, right? Persistent close, no. Mode line. Hmm. What if I explode this? And then take that curve there. Take this point, move this point. I'm just trying to create a curve. Let me join it up. Yeah, there we go. I'm just trying to make a curve that has a duplicate line at the end of it, like so, right? So this line segment is now duplicated, right? If I were to uh, ask what, it would say that it's valid, but it is an open polyline, right? So it's not a closed polyline. So before finding these was a pain in the ass with just Rhino. Uh, you could do that in, in uh, grasshopper without any problems, but in Rhino it was quite problematic. And now intersect self, you know, if, if I just select that curve and click intersect self, it will immediately give me these two points. So now I know that this line segment is, is the culprit, right? And then I can explode, select one of these segments, delete them, don't need the points anymore, select the whole curve, join it up, Type in what? Closed polyline, right? So we have just cleaned it up. So for cleaning up different things, it's it's excellent. Also, um, sometimes, let me just create a box and mesh it. Let me create a mesh from this box, copy it. So sometimes when you have a mesh that has a one non-manifold edge, which is this edge right here, um, and you, for instance, delete faces, you have an opening in it, right? 
and then you're going to try and do duplicate border and use planner surface on it and for some reason it just works i don't know why hmm, that, that's that's strange usually um it creates this kind of a zigzag uh boundary i guess sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but let me just quickly rebuild my experience with it it creates this kind of a zigzag curve here um, which will start complaining you know self-intersecting input curves were found would you like to use curve boolean processing right it starts complaining when you're uh, when you're creating surfaces from it um, so then intersect self tool will give you exactly the point where you need to fix these intersections right where you need to um, separate these these islands or these openings into separate geometries and then use uh, either a patch or, or whatever to planner surface to to fill them up right so again intersect self and so, uh, select self intersecting these two tools are really great for troubleshooting and finding problematic areas and fixing them so named selections um this tool right here is is a really big quality of life improvement at least for the way i work and it works in this way uh, let's say you have a bunch of you know boxes or whatever a bunch of geometries like that and then you have a bunch of spheres and yeah something like that so name selections if i click on this tool it will open up this small uh box right here where we can save a um sets of selections right so i can select all of these spheres and i can save that selection and call it uh, my spheres hit ok and then i can select these boxes and oops, select these boxes click save and call them my boxes right hit ok so now when i click on my spheres here in this list it selects all of my spheres when i click on my boxes it selects all of the boxes it's just a great level quality of life improvement i'm skipping over a few tools here edge continuity and layer book because those are also um, edge continuity is a good analysis uh, tool for uh, to, to see if the uh, surface uh, that co contains an edge if that surface is continuous or not uh, layer book just lets you go through every layer individually uh, these two are whatever at least for me <clears throat> a quad remesh though is a, one of the best tools uh, that will come with rhino 7 i really enjoy it and the way it works is <clears throat> excuse me let's see if i have a box here and let me do a sphere so you're just modeling out some sort of a uh, some sort of a shape right another sphere and let's maybe do a cylinder here Let's, let's just move it and let's me uh, let's do a boolean difference so let me carve out that and do boolean union between these three whatever you know some sort of a form before if you needed to kind of convert it into a mesh you would just type in mesh and you would just choose how many polygons you want or you could have detailed controls and have a little bit more control over it but you know it, it wasn't perfect for sure um, so you would just end up with a mesh something like this right so now i'm happy to say that quad remesh really fixes the topology of the mesh and also what the heck is happening here oh yeah the topology is just horrible so quad remesh if i were to just select the mesh or the poly surface doesn't matter which one um, i could click the quad remesh button and here it gives me this menu where i can either use a target edge length which i i don't really want to use but um what i prefer to use is target quad count so how many polygons do we expect to have and 2000 uh, in this case is fine this is just an example adaptive size this is how big or small those those polygons will become so they can uh, become 50 percent of their original size um is it 
50% or maybe if it doesn't need to use all 2000 to rebuild this it can use only a thousand it will use only a thousand uh, you can also work with symmetry but this is not a symmetrical model so we don't care about that and blah, 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 guide curves so you can have some guide curves to um, guide the flow of polygons uh, al along the surface which is really strong um, and other than that it's 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 all pretty you know pretty self-explanatory all of these settings if i click preview There we go. You can see the poly flow of the mesh. Um, it also has this option to detect the hard edges, which is super. In this case, you can see that if I hit OK, and let me just delete the original. Oops, that's not the original. Let me delete the original. Um, most of the hard edges are going to be detected, except for some reason this one. So it still has a few bugs, I guess. Uh, but, but, if I were to, or actually, will it detect here? Okay. Quad remeshing. No, it also keeps it flowy here as well. But if I were to also do quad remesh without detecting hard edges and hitting OK. Right. So what we're going to end up with is every edge is going to be treated smoothly, right? So it's going to merge everything together and also try and keep the clean topology. So this version right here, since we are working with hard edges, is going to keep um, the, the form uh, as close to original as possible, as you can see here. And this one will start messing up in the sharp, sharp corners. So uh, for for not keeping the hard edges, um, I would suggest using that tool only on soft geometry. So again, this is a superb tool that we finally have in Rhino 7. I'm really happy about this one. So scale text height. Um, this tool right here, it seems to be unnecessary at the beginning, at the start, but it's actually really, really cool. So if I have uh, some sort of a text, and actually you can do this in top view. Uh, if I have some sort of a text, um, there we go. Um, scale text height tool uh, would just kind of ask us for a scale factor for this text, and I could say 10, right? And it just scales it up by 10. Nothing fancy. We can do the same thing with just gumball and holding down the shift key, right? And scaling it up by 10, right? Um, but, but, if I have like five or, or six, one, two, three, four, five, six. If I have six um, different texts, right? Why is this one not, hello? Underline. <laughs> okay, sure. Um, if I have like five or six different texts, then Gumball will not work because it will scale the gaps between the texts uh, as well, right? So that's not, not great. So scale text height at that point, if I were to scale factor, I'll just use two in this case, right? Every text gets scaled up individually, text blocks get scaled up individually while still keeping the same gap between um, the, the, the text blocks. This is so, so good for uh, different applications, mostly for technical drawings, but it's, I'm, I'm really, really happy. So let's talk about intersections and in particular, how fast intersections are being calculated. I believe Clash, uh, which I'm not sure, I think it was in Rhino 6. I'm pretty sure it was in Rhino 6, but on, it was only for, for Grasshopper uh, in SDK. 
Um, doesn't matter. So clash is a very fast way, or calculation-wise, fast way of how to um, calculate if two objects are colliding, right? Or, or if a set of objects are colliding. So if I have a, a few boxes here and there, whoops, come on. Box, box, box. Hello, holding down the Alt key, box. <clears throat> so I have four boxes here, and then I have, um, yeah, let me just make a copy of this one, kind of rotate it, just move it somewhere here. Or actually, let's make it collide with two, two other boxes, right? Um, so imagine you have like much, much more than just five boxes, right? Uh, and you need to all of the objects not to intersect with one another, uh, not to uh, clash with one another, right? So you can double check which ones are intersecting by using this tool. Um, if I click on clash, it will ask me to select a set uh, for clash detect. Uh, select first set for clash detection, right? So you need to select the first set. Let's say these four boxes here. Enter. And then it will ask us to select the second set, and I'll select this box right here, enter. And clearance, clearance distance is basically how far away um, do these boxes need to be from one another uh, to start registering as a clash, right? So in this case, zero, right? They need to actually be either touching or intersecting to be registered. And if I hit enter, it will immediately show me where the clash happens, right? So it says displaying clash one out of two, it means it found two of them, right? So the first one is between this box right here and this box right here, and it's right here. Um, and then I can click on next, and it's going to show me between this box and this box right here, right? So then I can start troubleshooting and start, uh, you know, moving things around and making them not clash. And now I can Select clash again, select these boxes, enter, select this one, enter, clearance distance zero, no clashes, right? Super. So the package manager here, it's, it's not a tool for, for geometry per se, but it's actually a tool uh, that is quite useful for downloading stuff, <laughs> right? For, for, for downloading, um, different plugins for Rhino, so you can search and uh, or you can just uh, scroll through here and, and find the, the, the plugins that you need. So Viewerbird is here, uh, what else do we know? Uh, paneling tools, everyone likes paneling tools, so that's here. Um, I believe human, uh, human UI was here as well. Oh, Kangaroo is there, Mesh Machine, MetaHopper, let me just try. Human UI. It's doing its thing. There we go. Just human. So then you can just uh, download and install, and it will do it automatically for you. So it's a quite quite a nice quality of life improvement for me. Okay. So now soft transform. This tool right here. It's a bit tricky to use, but uh, let, let, let's try. Uh, so let's say I have... A... How do we do this? I know. Uh, let's go to Mesh Tools and let's just create a Mesh Plane. And I will say 10 by 10. Yeah, 10 by 10 is fine. So I'll just create this Mesh Plane right here. So back here, under Soft Transform, if I click this tool, it will ask me to uh, choose an option, right? So there are three options here. What's the shape? Is it smooth or is it uh, rounded, sharp or linear? I will choose smooth. Uh, it will ask us for a radius. So here uh, scale matters. So that's five. Let's do radius of, if that's 10. Let's do radius of 50, right? Radius 50 and enable, yes. Right. So I've turned it on. This is very important to turn it on. I hit enter and nothing happens, right? But now, when I uh, select the uh, points on and I FN, F10 or F10 or 
or just type in points on. Once you work with control points and you select a mesh point and you're moving it up, it will start working as this soft transformation, right? This is super cool. This is really, really good for this kind of quick, soft modeling. And once you're happy with it, once you're done, then you can turn off the soft transform by clicking the, uh, the tool again and choosing enable, no. Enter, control points back on, and let me just select this guy for instance, move it up, and now it's only this single vertex that's being moved up, right? So this is, I, I really, I, I think this is a game changer for, for mesh modeling in Rhino. So last tool before we move into sub D uh, that, that I wanted to cover here is snap to mesh object tool, which is located right here. It's right at the end, snap to mesh object. Um, how do we do this? Do, do, do. Let's say I have, let me just do it this way. I have a surface that, or, or rather a curve that's doing its thing. And let me mess it up a bit, something like that. Create a loft. There we go. Mesh it. Sure, whatever. You know, it's, it's a shitty mesh, but we don't care. And now we want uh, to draw a curve on, on top of this mesh, right? Before you could only do that with a surface, and now you can do that with a mesh, which is super. Um, so to do that, I will go to this tool, snap to mesh object tool here. Select mesh object to constrain all input to. I will select this uh, mesh right here, hit enter. And now nothing changes, right? But now this object is indeed the, the everything that I draw is going to be drawn on top of this mesh, right? So for instance, if I draw a control point curve and let me turn off snapping, right? And I just draw on top of it like that, you can see that all of the control points of this curve are being mapped on top of this mesh, right? This is really, really good uh, for various, various reasons. Okay, and now we are coming to sub D, which is Basically, the main selling point, at least for me, for Rhino 7, it's a new type of geometry before we had poly surfaces and meshes, right, for, for 3D geometries. Now we have sub D uh, as a third type. Um, and it's really, really strong for uh, this kind of a freeform 3D modeling. And I'll show you in a second. So sub D is located right here, but also it actually has its own tab here. And you can think about it as uh, back in Rhino 5, we had T-Splines, which was a plugin for Rhino. Um, and then T-Splines were purchased by Autodesk and now they are a part of Fusion 360. Uh, so in Rhino 6, we didn't have T-Splines. And now they are coming back in the form of sub-D tools and even stronger than they were before. Um, just to show you a few examples, because again, I, I will be making quite a few tutorials about this uh, in the future. But just to show you a few examples of how sub-D works is, uh, first let's start with, let's say I'll just create a sub-D sphere. So this is not a poly surface, this is a sub-D geometry. And let me create a sub-D box, like that. So we have a sphere and we have a box, right? And let's say I want to connect this sphere and this box, uh, let's say from this patch right here to this patch right here. I can do that so easily with um, bridge tool, which I have no idea wh where it is, but we will find it, don't worry. Extrude, offset, delete, bridge. Bridge meshes or sub Ds, right? So I can click that. I, I select the first face, enter. I select the second face, enter, 
and that's yeah <laughs> and it just connects uh, I can choose to have a sharp crease or no crease I can choose to join or not to join I can choose how many segments it's going to have straightness I don't know um, and then I just hit OK and now this is a single um, sub D object right so that bridge tool is really really good and also with sub D you can you can see that everything is always um, smoothed out but actually uh, you can work with creases adding creases or removing creases just like you can do the same thing with mesh tools now so for instance to add a crease where is it crease crease add crease to add a crease I just choose this tool right here and I just eh, select the edges which I want to keep sharp I hit enter and now they're creased meaning that they are not going to smooth out then I can uh, for instance inset sub D edges select faces right so for instance I select these faces there inset distance one whatever right so I can inset them I can move them down and really start you know go, going quite deep with, with with these tools so again I will not be showing you all different um, ways of how you can use that I will keep that for for my tutorials this is just an overview but sub D is it's so good okay um, actually okay one, one more sub D multi pipe this is the best thing ever so let's say I have line one more hello uh, object snap one more line and let me just do a third line right oh the horror right this this kind of a connection before we had to use pipe or use voxel based uh, remeshing tools to in grasshopper to to kind of create a solid uh, surface uh, or solid solid poly surface so we would use a pipe and then we use boolean operations boolean union and just hope for the best and now it seems to work so that's good but then you know what if um for instance this guy is going up this guy is going slightly down and then we do pipe again and now the intersections are not that great, right? So then when you when we do Boolean union, uh, yikes, right? Some some problematic areas. Well, the top is not that bad, but the bottom, some problematic areas start appearing. Now with sub D tools, we have this multi pipe, sub D multi pipe tool, where I if I select it, it will ask me to select the curves. So I select the curves, I hit enter set pipe radius one sure whatever Th there it is right super clean connection very nice I wonder what if I add one more and one more I just want to break it um, pipe there starts twisting a little bit but other than that superb right so this is a great one and of course uh, you can convert it like uh, to poly surface to poly um, I don't remember how uh, where was it where was it toggle sub D display that's a selection Oh no. Oh there are two nerves, sorry. Uh two nerves. Enter, enter, delete. And this is a poly surface, right? Which we can cap. Type in what? Closed solid poly surface, valid poly surface. Super. So that tool right there is, is a game changer for me. Um again, many, many, many tutorials to come about this. So I guess for final thoughts, um, 
Rhino 7 is, they really stepped up their game with mesh tools. I didn't even show you adding creases, extruding the meshes and uh, inserting edge loops. Actually, inserting edge loops is really cool, right? So we have a box and then you can just use um, insert edge loop. Uh, just click on select edge from loop uh, here, right? Enter. And then you can just insert a new edge loop into uh, into the mesh um, and it doesn't matter many many new tools with meshes and with sub D tools are going to be available in Rhino 7 and that's uh, I mean for for advanced geometry creation this is super cool this is so so nice and I would definitely suggest you checking it out uh, check out the uh, work in progress version and uh, get it once once it's out there once once you can get it hope you enjoyed this quick overview and i will see you in the next videos later